From one of the big players to the next, Simon Lethleen is the head of football at the St Kilda Football Club, and he joins us from Marvel Stadium. Simon, good morning. G'day, Del. G'day, Sam. How are you going? Leathers, we're good. Uh, really exciting period coming up for the Saints. It sounds like you've got some pretty big names who will be coming in. How are you going to get the deals done? Yeah, we've certainly, um, I guess, had a pretty active year with um, James Gallagher, our list manager, uh, I guess at the front of some good conversations with some good players that we want um, to make our team better on field. Um, so, yeah, we're well placed with a few and um, obviously conscious that you've got to get those deals done and that's what the next 10 days are all about. So Brad Hill seems like the, the biggest name. Uh, he's got two years left on his deal. How have the initial conversations with Frio been and how late do you think this will go? Um, oh, I mean, it can get done today if we're on the same page, but um, that probably takes a little bit of time. I know that... Um, Gags and Peter Bell have been uh, in conversations and we're realistic that he's got two years to go and he's a pretty good player. So we're not going to you know, mess around and nickel and dime too much. He's a, a, a valuable player for Frio and um, I think our conversations with Frio will um, confirm that we think him very valuable for us too. So I'm hopeful we can get that one done. But you know, there's, there's other parts that come into all these conversations around what they need, what we need and, and what else is going on for both clubs and other players. So... Uh, we'll be working pretty hard on that one. You willing to part ways with your first pick? Well, I think we're conscious that we um, uh, might have to. Um, you know, Brad Hill is a first-round pick type of player. He's probably one of the best wings in the comp. We need speed. We need class. He's 25. He's fit. He plays well wherever he goes. Um, you know, we've had three first-round draft picks in the last two years, so I think we're um, placed in the spot where we're going to need to talk about that for sure. Is it in your best interest to split that pick six? So therefore you might have two in the teens, for example. Is that in the Saints' best interest? Yeah, it'd be nice. It's not necessarily possible. Um, you know, there's a there's a number of clubs that would like to be able to split picks and there's a number of clubs that aren't prepared to split their picks. So <laughs> it'd be nice. But, um, no, we've um, been working on lots of different combinations of what we might be able to do. But um, reality is Brad's a very good player and we'll... Um, We'll treat him accordingly. How is Brad's body when being assessed? Well, he's had the uh, the screen that you would have been through, Dell, with Barb's and Stoney, and they don't mess around at the Saints with their medicals. So, uh, no, he's uh, he's fit and well. He's played. He doesn't miss many games, and as I said, he's uh, at the peak of his powers at 25, 26, and uh, confidence got a lot of foot in him. And that's a five-year deal for Hill on the table at the moment from the Saints. Yeah, it's been reported as five years. I'm not sure that. The money that gets reported all the time is correct. I'm not sure the media's ever gone low on the money. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a five-year deal. It's a nice clip for the media on the way through. Um, Zach Jones, has he indicated he wants to come to the Saints? Yeah, I don't think um, uh, his manager or Zach are big on the nominations like other managements are, and I'm not necessarily that fussed about who nominates who and which club confirms which nominations, but he's certainly, in our view, dealing with us exclusively at the moment um, with a preference to come to, to the Saints, and that's... Again, good for us. We've met him a number of times. Um, and if we can get that deal done, he'll add some pace and class as well. People want to know about Josh Bruce Leathers and the reports last week. <laughs> Still a year to go on his deal. Top five in contested marks in the league, kicked 35, 36-odd goals. Do the Saints still want him? Yeah, he's a pretty good player. Um, he's a much-loved player too and well-liked by the playing group. So um, he's at the end of a, a long-term deal. Um, you know, we didn't, uh, despite... Uh, communications. Otherwise, we didn't encourage him to go and um, test the market, but he's certainly in his rights to do so. He's, he's obviously found with the Bulldogs uh, a longer-term deal because we aren't at a stage where we're looking to extend him right now. So um, that's all well and good. Um, we've had open communications with Josh of late. Um, we would like him still playing uh, alongside Max King and Tim Membry. Um, so for him to be extracted out of here so that he's not playing with us, it'll need to be an appropriate deal for the Saints. Haven't you lost a bit of the whip in your hand, though, Simon? I mean, he's essentially done a deal with another club. It's going to be very difficult for him to turn around and stay. Yeah, well, I think if anyone's got a whip, we have. I mean, he's got a year to go, and we want him to play with us. So um, he'll be playing round one next year unless um, the Dogs, I guess, have a deal that we think um, is appropriate. And as I said you know, the other day, we're not looking to go backwards next year. We're looking to go forwards. And if we haven't got a replacement um, to play forward instead of Josh and or an appropriate um, set of assets for him to leave, then uh, he'll certainly be seeing it last year of his contract. That's absolutely clear in our mind. So what's it, what's it going to take? Well, it's going to take uh, the Bulldogs come up with a deal that's appropriate. Um, so the second far, round not appropriate? Uh, it depends on whether the second round is pick 20 or whether it's pick 40. Okay. Um, well, the second they've currently got, got 32, I think. 
Yeah, well, we've talked about, they've certainly talked about that pick, and I don't think it's going to get that done just at the minute, but um, there's rarely just one pick deal's done. There's usually swaps and picks and players and all sorts of stuff. So, it's yeah, as I said, it's going to need to, to represent that um, the dogs want off him four years on good money. I'm not sure that that in isolation does that. I'm not sure what you think, but I don't think it does. I want to ask you about a couple of other players that names have been mentioned. Blake Akers. Yeah, no, Blake's got a year to go. He's a um, pretty consistent senior player with us. Um, we haven't had any clubs um, on our doorstep asking about Blake uh, in any substantive fashion, so uh, that's one that hasn't had a great deal of time given to it. And the other one's Jack Noons. Yeah, well, Jack's a free agent um, and currently unsigned. Um, we've had, a, I guess, discussions and, a, and an offer on the table for a fair while with Jack, and, and quite rightly he's... Um, I guess, assessing his options, and some of those options don't become apparent until about now and or until teams finish the finals. That's kind of an ongoing chat with his management. Um, again, a 150-game player who plays most weeks but quite rightly needs to work out what the next um, back half of his career looks like and with who, so that's sort of ongoing, but it's um, not a pressing one at the minute. This is Telstra AFL Trade Radio. Trade mornings for IG Markets. Sam McClure and Nick Dalsano being joined by the head of footy at the St Kilda Footy Club. Simon Lethleen. Simon, have you got any interest in Dan Butler from the Tigers? We've got interest in all sorts of good players. Um, <laughs> he certainly has speed, um, great tackle pressure, uh, premiership player and part of a good program. Uh, we've certainly had a chat to Dan. Uh, I think he's assessing what he wants to do, uh, what sort of offer he'll get from the Tigers. But, uh, yeah, he would be pretty handy under the roof in, in our front half. So we're certainly... Um, talking to him and his management, no doubt. The last player I want to ask you about, and it feels like it's been going for 11 or 12 months now, and it's Ben King, where the club currently stands and what your thoughts are around the Ben King. I know he's contracted, but what the club's planning on, or have they spoken to Ben or his management at any stage? Well, we've spoken to his management because he, um, his brother is managed by the same uh, company and we see his parents regularly, so we often check in on how Ben is, but I think that's a pretty clear-cut one. Ben... He's playing at Gold Coast next year. Um, and if he uh, doesn't sign and looks to move next year, we'll talk to him. But no, conscious he's a contracted player who's made it clear he's playing at Gold Coast. And um, we look forward to seeing if Max is faster than he is because he reckons he is. <laughs> when you drafted Max, did you have in the back of your mind that you'd like to get his brother to join him at some stage of their careers? Well, I think anyone who was going to draft Max would like Ben to join him at some stage because they're both elite talent, uh, hard to find players of that ilk so um, if he wants to join Max and we can get that done at some stage that'd be terrific but no I mean we drafted Max for Max um, mm. but it's a, it's obviously a romantic thought to have twins playing together and it happens occasionally if it happens for the Saints that'd be unbelievable. Simon I reckon this is the first time that we've heard you publicly since <coughs> um, the, the coaching change when Alan Richardson uh, was um, when he left the club as coach when they parted ways your name was brought up several times in the media and being linked to your close friend, Brad Scott. Did that ever get further down the pipeline than we thought? What was your reaction to those reports? Yeah, no, I probably haven't spoken since then. Um, oh, yeah, look, uh, Brad and I are close friends. That's pretty well known for some reason. Um, yeah, there was a number of, um, I guess, journalists that were pretty keen to put forward, um, in their view, a factual scenario that there'd been a deal done with Brad and he was coming to the Saints, and I found that you know, particularly offensive, especially when some of those articles were being written when Richo was still contracted to us and, and we were doing our best to support Richo in, in his endeavours. So that was, yeah, that was um, interesting, but I guess that, that's the world we live in. And there was a number of articles that followed that kept saying that a deal was done um, with some great authority, it was being said too. And I guess I haven't seen many articles since that um, retracted those views when it became really apparent there was no deal done because Brad wanted to have a year off and... Um, yeah, I guess that's the world we live in, but it's disappointing when when it's about you and it's about your integrity and, and it's about other people that um, really don't know the facts. So that was um, that's all part of it. Did you ever talk to Brad about becoming St Kilda coach? Yeah, of course. We we, we confirmed that we reached out to Brad to see what he wanted to do, but um, I think I had better knowledge than most that Brad probably needed some time off, um, and yep. that's exactly what's happened. Left, there's some good news for the Saints and that Dill Robertson can resume training with the group when they return. I want to ask you about Paddy McCartan and where he's currently at and what his future looks like. Yeah, great great for Robbo. Um, he's, you know, I think one of our best players and one of our best leaders on field and off field. So 
there'd been some concerns at our end, I think, with uh, with Dill as well. He was not going to be able to get back, given what happened twice now. But um, uh, we sent Dill overseas, and he got some good advice, um, and he's got some new medication, and he's got the all clear, subject to AFL and St Kilda board approval to to keep ploughing ahead, which is um, a fantastic result that I think will hopefully get endorsed by all parties. And um, he's already back training. Uh, he'll be closely monitored, uh, and if we can get a fit Dill Robertson back, he's a you know a top five player at our club, and um, and that's a great result as far as Paddy goes. Um, yeah, that's an ongoing one. Um, Paddy's, um, you know, as you all know, dealt with a number of concussion-based symptoms since his latest knock in the JLT. That's obviously a while back now, and uh, it's a sensitive one. We're really conscious of Paddy's health, conscious of supporting him, um, and conscious of making sure that he can make the best decisions for his future so that's really ongoing and I'm in regular touch with Paddy and his management and uh, we keep sort of ploughing ahead Happy to facilitate a trade for Jack Stephen to Geelong? Um, If it's the right thing for Jack and it's the right thing for the Saints, we certainly will Jack's a pretty important player at the Saints footy club he's also um, had well publicised issues this year and if, if it's best for Paddy to start again and to move and um, and again, that the Cats can facilitate a, uh, a trade that reflects his importance to us, uh, as well as um, the fact that we believe Jack's got a bit of footy left in him, then we'll get that deal done if it's good for everyone. But there's a bit of water under the bridge still, so far as how the Saints rate him for a trade asset, and, yep. um, and whether Jack really wants to go. Um, he hasn't made that call definitively. I think he'd happily stay at the Saints. So if he if he wants to happily stay with us and we can't get a trade done, we'll happily have Jack. And Simon, just so we let you go, you've uh, got an exciting new sponsor that I think's just signed. Yeah, we've got uh, CMC Markets, which is um, going to be powering the Saints through trade period, which is fantastic. They're one of Australia's uh, biggest retail stockbroking providers, so they're, they're on board. Nice with our men's shorts next year as well as supporting us during trade. So it's great that the Saints can get some sponsors going this time of year on the back of, um, I guess, a bit of positivity. So uh, thanks to the CMC boys. Lots of positivity currently going on at the Saints. Simon, appreciate your time. Good luck for the trade period. Thanks for having us, guys. Cheers. Thanks, Simon Lethlane and Mick Agresta straight off the top here at Trade Mornings, all for IG Markets.